things I'm mentioning in this video have been occurring in F1 2017 multiplayer since the very beginning of the game's release. None of which have been fixed, nor have Codemasters paid any attention to it, despite the constant moaning that we've given them to try and fix multiplayer to make it as good as possible for the next upcoming game. Hopefully going into the next game, Codemasters actually get their act together, listen to the community, and actually fix multiplayer and pay more attention. <sighs> Enjoy the video. F1 2017 Online overall has been a semi-decent game, not going to lie. It was pretty much improved in a couple of areas compared to the last few games. But in terms of all the glitches and bugs, it's pretty much taken a pretty large step backwards. With the rise of esports, everyone could probably would have thought, you know what, maybe Codemasters are going to pay a little bit more attention to multiplayer. Now that, like for example, when we're, when we're heading into the... Uh, Abu Dhabi Esports event, we would have hoped for a little bit more attention to be paid online, maybe fix all the bugs because of all the people that may have been watching, could have been inspired to buy the F1 game and try out multiplayer to get into esports themselves. That didn't happen. If they were one of those people to pick up 2017 and try maybe attempt multiplayer, they would have been severely disappointed. Multiplayer is pretty broken, there's many a glitch, and Overall, it's just a shit fest, and it's not like this is anything new. Codemasters are aware of all these bugs that are in F1 2017 multiplayer, and they've just not done anything with it. They've left the game as it was, at, like pretty much as the, the game started, to where we are now. The glitches are basically the same. Nothing was patched, nothing was fixed, and if something was fixed, it brought in something else. So, this video is going to be made to go over the things that need to be fixed for F1 2018. Some of these things have been recurring for a couple of games now, and I think that just shows the laziness that has to go in. That they don't even bother to, f to like realise that there are issues from previous games that are still in this game. I think that's just... that's, that's appalling, really, but... As long as money goes into their bank accounts, they don't care. First thing I'm going to just talk about is the damage model. Overall, I know this is a little bit of a weird thing, because this goes for the whole, maybe the game entirely. The, the damage model as a whole um, is decent. Um, it is relatively realistic at times, and usually you pay the price for your mistakes, and they are quite reasonable. But... There are times where you can ram into a wall and perhaps just get end plate damage. At 120 mile an hour, run into a wall, you could just get end plate damage or lose a front wing and keep going. Other times you can graze a wall at maybe 20 miles an hour, wing comes off, tyre comes out and you're out of the race. I think The Amazement had something like this happen in the OLC. He was trying to like turn the car, he tapped the wall and his wheel came off. In Singapore, I think. I could be wrong about that. That's ridiculous. Like and that's been a thing since the start of the game as well. And that's and they are aware of this. Did did they patch it? Of course not. Of course they didn't. Next thing is probably one of the big major things is the slipstream glitch. If you're not aware of the slipstream glitch, first of all, fuck knows what you're doing on my channel considering like this is literally online gameplay that gets given, and if you're not aware of the slipstream glitch, I'm not sure what's going on with your head. Just to sum it up pretty much, the slipstream glitch occurs when a player in a multiplayer session leaves the session uh, without the race being finished, and therefore they, when they leave, it causes a bunch of lag, and then now with the slipstream glitch, obviously the glitch is you don't get any slipstream. You don't get slipstream on F1 2017, it's near enough impossible to overtake another car. At least on 2016, uh, actually yeah, this was a glitch on F1 2016 I should add, for the whole game. But um, I don't think there was, a, there was a core reason to why that would happen, I don't think we ever found out. I'm not quite sure, maybe they did, but I kind of gave up on the racing at the end of that game. But um, pretty much... This has been an issue since the start of the game. We didn't know the main reason for it until I think like midway through or close to the end of season 14 of AOR. And Codemasters, they've been aware of this. 
we, we've had so many tweets go out saying the stitch stream is broken, your game is broken, nothing was fixed, nothing was said, and that's just nothing happened. So, and for esports, I'm, I think there was a slittering glitch for someone. I might be wrong. There is a big chance I'm wrong. Like, imagine if something like this happened for the esports. You turn up, run up, run up to Silverstone, you're hyped, you're running in P2 behind the race leader, and then you realise that because, like, maybe someone retired, or, it, it, or their PC is just, like, fucked out, and it kicks them out of the lobby, they, they now can't overtake the leader because they've got slipstream glitch and they can't overtake them. But you can't really, that's not something acceptable. Of course, it's a failure on the game's part, but that's the massive issue. There's nothing we can do about that. Especially if it's like someone's like PC fucks out and it like just turns off or some shit, I don't know. And like, that's it. That's the slipstream glitch, race is practically over. You might as well end the race like on lap two. So that's a massive thing that needs to be fixed for the next game. Uh, next thing, the default setup glitch. I'm actually, I think this actually happened in the esports where, well, I know it's happened to me a couple of times on multiplayer anyway. But the default setup glitch, you load us, you load up a setup in qualifying. Of course, you get the park fair, maybe rules apply, whatever. You go out on track, you do your lap, you've got your setup, come back in, put on new set of tires, turn up the fuel, and you're just waiting to get going again. Go out onto the circuit, you go to like change fuel mix or whatever, and then you notice that your front wing, which maybe should have been four, is now six. You didn't change it to six. You look at your differential, and that's gone to maybe seven, that's gone to 75. You didn't have it on 75, you had it on 100. And your 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 brakes have gone from 72 to like 60. Why has that happened then? What, what, why has that happened? Like, I didn't change my setup. Why, why does that occur? I don't know. This is this is also an issue that's been occurring since the start of the game, and nothing was ever said about it. There was no fix that came out. There, nothing was said about actually ever intending to fix any of these glitches, and that's just really poor development in my opinion. The default set glitch. That's also another thing that could completely ruin esports. You're going up to the car behind. This can happen mid-race as well, I should add. You can lose your setup mid-race. How retarded is that? I imagine that happens in the eSports. Like, got, I don't know, Sally is behind um, Brendan Lee or something. And, you know, he's, he's so much quicker than him. He's, go, he's going down the back straight. Why is Brendan Lee all of a sudden pulling away with... Although Sally's got slit room in DRS. Oh, wait. He's gone from, like, having 1-5 air or some, I don't know, to, like, to 6-6. Six, six. How's he meant to keep up now? It's retarded. I'm not sure why this is still in the game. And this needs to be fixed for... Death. Of course, all of these glitches need to be fixed for 2018. Some of these glitches are more important than others. Uh, next thing, corner cutting. I don't really need to go into much detail about that one. Corner cutting is a shambles. It's inconsistent. It's crap. You can sometimes juke Jehovah a corner to fucking Narnia and back and get no warning they'll let you off. Or you can run slightly wide at turn four at Hungary, lift off, rejoin the circuit, get a warning. Where's the logic in that? I don't know. Frame rate. The frame rate is a massive problem. This isn't a thing that's going to happen on esports. I don't know if this happens on other consoles, but coming from an Xbox One AOR League racer, the FPS issues are massive. Going into qualifying, you, so I'm going to set the scene, I, I mentioned this in my Spain video. Setting the scene, you're coming out the pits, you're at the very start of the session qualifying. You're hyping yourself up, you want to get a good qualifying lap in. You get to the final corner, FPS is all fine, get to the final corner, 5 FPS. The game is juttering backwards and forwards, you can't really tell what's going on. You turn, you're having to turn in a bit earlier because you don't know where your car is, you don't know what's exactly happening on your screen. And overall, you're losing a good couple of tenths on your lap. Maybe a second if you're really unlucky. But there's nothing we can do about that. Apparently, the fix for that is to buy an Xbox One X. I'm not buying an Xbox One X to just be able to have good frames on F1 2017. You're mental. There should be a fix for that. If the console can't handle that, then you need to change something with the resolution and FPS itself. If the game can't run 20 pe people online, don't force it to pretty simple. Equal cars, again, it's not something I need to go into massive detail about. The cars aren't equal. 
sometimes the, the rent, well, for example, the tour roster's a bit uh, understeery. Um, the Renault cars can be a little bit, oh, no, wait, no, the Renault cars are a little bit understeery. Ferrari cars are a little bit oversteery. To be, to be fair, this game, they've been quite equal, so I think all they need to do for this, on this point is just improve on that. Make it a little bit more equal, and we'll be heading in the right direction in terms of the, of the cars. Now, another pretty massive thing that occurred last season in AOR was, well, in Belgium, for example, well, I'm going to use Belgium. Um, start of the race, it's it's raining. Okay, so we looked we looked at the monitors in qualifying. We're like, okay, so it's going to rain in qualifying. So we're going to be aware of this. We go for a laps, maybe not caring so much about the tyre wear, since we think it's going to be intermediate conditions at the start. You know, you do your laps, you qualify P4, if you in my case, get to the grid. You're, I'm still on the on the ultra soft tyres, but it's raining. Okay, I can deal with that. Maybe the intermediate period will appear throughout the race. You know, 22 lap race. It's a it's a long lap around Belgium as well, so that's a lot of time for it to go from intermediate from just light rain to intermediate conditions for the for the cars. No, of course not. Um, it rained for what 40 minutes, 40, 40 minutes to 50 minutes of a Belgium race, light rain never had to move to the intermediate tires not once i made that mistake because i thought this game actually had some common sense biggest mistake of my league racing career and you know you lose out on the podium also well i probably got that myself but like that's the point why is that a thing i've seen this happen before it's happened to me in career mode why is it like rain but the ultra softs are better than the inters why does that happen? Why is that a thing? I don't know. It's Codemasters. Ask them. They're aware of that as well. That nothing ever happened. Overall lag and desync. I think that one's quite basic. Um, racing against laggy people. EVR Reynolds is a massive example. And he lives in the UK. His lag is completely unraceable at times. They just need to work on that. Make it better. And the desync as well. That's a massive thing that needs to be fixed. Obviously, we had the dramas of um, the Flying Finn and uh, RG Matiz when they came to blows, and it was apparently, allegedly, desync. So that this needs to be fixed. This is a glitch we actually found out um, a few weeks ago, actually. Um, we're doing uh, Silverstone practice for AOR. Uh, we've got so, so it's, it was me, uh, Sarah Hamilton, Tara Martin, the Flying Finn. Uh, cryo lockdown and Danny M7 joined the lobby in mid qualifying. The flying Finn leaves during qualifying because he thinks it's time to set up the lobby when it wasn't. So he doesn't join back to the lobby and then Danny M7 inherits his car. So the flying Finn qualified on pole and Danny M7 who's joined the mid qualifying, he's you know gone to join session and he was going to get whatever car was available. Instead, uh, Finn left, Danny inherited his car. So he gets to start on pole, and he got his setup. So the Flying Finn's next little hacked setup was all of a sudden given to Danny M7, because he left the session and he just took his car. Why is that a thing? How does that happen? Surely when you join the session, it, it has to register you to the next car available, for like the, that has two seats, and there was a good few cars that had two seats available. But it's for some reason put obviously the, the first car was then Sally's, but it should not give Danny M7 Sally's setup. Why is that a thing? I, I don't. A lot of these things are, you just make you think. Why does this happen? Why is it even in the game? Why has it not been fixed? So that that is an issue that maybe code that codemasters do need to look at uh, for F1 2018. Uh, retired cars taking out meter boards. That's also pretty basic. If you retire in Spain, for example, uh, going down the main straight in qualifying, you retire. It takes up the hundred, the, the I think the 150 and 100 meter boards. That shouldn't happen. I mean, just let the car go on for a little bit longer and then park somewhere where it's not going to destroy meter boards. Very small thing, of course. Codemasters, I don't think, can fix that mid-game, but that is something that they can fix heading into F1 2018. And it's something that really shouldn't be that hard to fix, in my opinion. And the last point I have here, uh, just for this video, is the Delta disappearing qualifying. I've had this myself. A few guys in AOR have had this. 
Uh, you do your first run, it's valid lap time. You know, say you do like a 22-7 or whatever, who cares? And if you, the Delta keeps track of, where, of like how much you are quicker or slower than your previous best. And you go out on track for your final run. You start your lap and you don't have a Delta. You have the Delta on, but it's not there. It just disappears for some reason. Don't know why it happens, but it does. Um, I'm pretty sure this is still a reoccurring issue on so far throughout the game. All of these are reoccurring issues. So um, that needs to be fixed. Of course, it's a very small thing, but some people like to be sure how quick they are throughout the lap. I, I myself, I just have it turned off because it's actually started to annoy me how often it was disappearing. Um, so I don't have it on myself, but I know some guys like to have it on and it just disappears and then they're just like baffled. They don't know where they're gaining or losing time to their previous best and they're just sat there left baffled and confused. Those are all the things that I have listed down. Um, yeah, so pretty much. Codemasters, with the rise of esports heading into Apple 2018 and Formula 1 themselves getting way more involved, they need to pay more attention to multiplayer. Career mode is good for the first few weeks, it gets the people in, but career mode doesn't have any longevity. Maybe for this game they have something that will make it, um, that will make people want to go back to career mode. But usually when you get bored of career mode you go to multiplayer. Once you go to multiplayer you find out how fucked the game is, there's so many bugs and glitches, there's nothing, there is no enjoyment there. You can't really just hop on F1 and have just an enjoyable session with the guys, or girls, but um, and it just ruins the fun, you don't want to play it. The dedicated fans will go back to that though, the dedicated fans will league race, they will play sprint modes, they will play with their friends despite the, all these glitches, but it it's really demotivating. If like you're playing sprint mode and then all of a sudden slipstream glitch, or you, your setup resets to default. It shouldn't happen. Why does it happen? I don't know. That's pretty much going to be this rant over, guys. So, hopefully, Code someone from Codemasters is watching this. They can take the things I've said on board and make sure that these issues aren't in F1 2018. And hopefully, F1 2018 will provide to be a really good multiplayer experience. Because in the end, that's all that. That's all I want. I want F1 to be as good a game as possible. And the only way that can happen is if multiplayer actually works. So hopefully Codemasters will maybe take my feedback on board. Maybe they'll just like, okay, well this kid doesn't know what he's on about. Like, is he alright? But hopefully they listen to what I've said about all these issues. Just take note of the issues and make sure they're not in the game. And hopefully we'll come out of it with a really good game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, for more F1 2017 league racing content and I will see you guys in my next video. Cheers.